Hi, I'm Tim from Tomography and welcome to our quick little video blog episode here. Um, the purpose of tonight's episode is I wanted to just quickly show you a couple of post-production techniques in Photoshop for working with high-key images. Um, as some of you may or may not know, we recently did a uh, studio shoot and put a couple of videos on YouTube demonstrating how to shoot these high-key images. These are the, the shots from, the, from those shoots. Um, but as you can see, right out of the camera, um, some of the images aren't perfect. Uh, we've got these, because we're working in such a small studio, we've got these background elements that come into the shot. Um, in this particular lighting scenario, for example, we're just using a beauty dish to light the model's face. and The light falls off quite quickly so that the floor isn't a bright white colour. Um, same thing over in this image. So there's a couple of things that we can quickly do in Photoshop to, to tidy those up. So let's go and do it. We've got the image in Photoshop here. Um, just very quickly, I need to give credit where it's due. I have actually seen this technique done by an American photographer called Zach Arias. Um, this is his website here. Um, ZachArias.com. Um, if you go to his blog, which I've got open on this tab, and just have a look on the technique page. Um, for the sake of time, I won't go all the way there, but he's got this video here of, about working with the white seamless. Go and, uh, and have a look if you get the chance. Um, Zach's video is a lot longer than mine. He uh, does a, a, actually a couple of images and explains the whole process in a lot more detail and a lot more thoroughly than I will. Um, I just wanted to quickly do this video for the people that haven't sort of had the opportunity to look at Zach's video um, and basically just to, uh, to give you a quick demonstration of, of how to do the edit. So, time's ticking away, we'll get going. Um, so, here's our image. It's, it's okay, as I said, but not entirely perfect. Um, if I bring up the Levels dialog here, I'm just going to accentuate the areas that we want to fix up. If I grab the Midpoint slider and start dragging this, you can see we've got these areas down here um, on the floor and these sort of areas here in the middle of the image and up here which aren't completely blown out. We want to sort of get rid of all this mess from in here, but still retaining all the, the detail in the model and we want to try and retain these uh, shadows or reflections rather. We want to get rid of the shadows but keep the reflections on the floor. Um, so the most obvious edit would be to grab the eraser tool and to just or brush it rather and just sort of start erasing stuff and go over here and start getting rid of this but then you start doing that which is not what we want to do. Uh, so we're going to get rid of that. What we are going to do before we get started though is make sure that your background colour is white. The background swatch here is set to white and that we're working in the background layer. Um, that's very important. So white here of course in the background swatch as well. So we're going to grab our marquee tool and we're just going to draw out a marquee down this side of the image and stopping just short of the model there and hit delete. Now CS3 and CS4 will actually just automatically delete that information but CS5 asks you what you want to do which is rather nice of it but we're just going to select background colour and click OK and all of a sudden that yuckiness is gone which is great. Do the same thing over this side just quickly, draw it out, stop just short of the model, hit delete and confirm by clicking OK, Control D to deselect. Now time's ticking away so I need to start moving quickly. I'm just going to zoom into 100% just to accentuate uh, this. Now you can see we've got this sort of demarcation line here and across the other side of the image as well. Um, and if I go down to the floor, where we need to do most of our work, we need to sort of clean up all this junk here. I'm actually going to go back out one step. Okay, so once again we could use the eraser tool, but aforementioned problems of decapitating models' feet and what have you, so we're going to actually use the dodge tool, which is this little guy here. Dodge tool. Um, just quickly a couple of things we need to set up. Close that, open up the uh, brush panel. Now we want to fairly, because we're going to be working in a fairly small space here, um, initially we want to be have a fairly small brush size, about sort of 80 pixels-ish, um, and a, quite a soft brush that's set to around about 10%, which is about what we want, so that's a good starting point. Close that panel. And we also want to make sure that the range that the dodge tool is working in is the highlights. That's really important, not midtones or shadows, but highlights. And a quite a low exposure, um, around about sort of the 10% mark. There we go. Um, oh, missed it. There we go. And make sure that protect tones is unticked. Otherwise, if there is any sort of different colours down here, which there are, if you've got that checked, you'll never really be able to get rid of that colour without using the eraser tool. So we're going to uncheck protect tones. I'm just going to switch over to my tablet here. And basically, what we're going to start to do is just to start to brush 
around these areas and you'll see that that uh, dodge tool is getting rid of all that mess. Uh, but we can go over the shoe because this isn't a highlight, it's not affecting the shoe. Um, I do want to be a little bit careful here and try and retain that um, reflection on the floor, so I'm going to do a sort of a bit of a rough job, but you sort of, you'll get the idea. Um, I want to try and get this done fairly quickly because we need to keep the video under 10 minutes. So I'm just going to quickly make a sort of an outline around here. And once again, you can see we're not really affecting the model's leg here because it's not a highlight. Um, around this side, keep brushing and just be careful to try and keep that reflection. Um, keep going, making that outline there. So that's about cool what I wanted to do there. Coming over this side of the model's leg, doing the same thing, just carefully brushing down, trying to keep the reflection. Cool. Keep going, keep brushing, brush, brush, brush. Okay, so that's got in the bulk of that stuff, so I'm going to get a, a brush size and make it a bit larger now, up to a couple hundred pixels, just for the sake of getting this done quickly, and get rid of all this junk. Uh, there we go. Okay, so that's pretty much got that. I'm just going to start moving up the image now, and we'll go to this area, and I'm just going to keep brushing. You can see we're getting rid of that, but once again, it's not really affecting the model or her dress because it's not a highlight. So, I mean, you could, if you wanted to create masks and uh, layer masks and sort of uh, smart objects and all sorts of stuff if you wanted to, but this is just a, a quick and easy way of, of brushing around the image and, and very quickly by using the dodge tool, uh, just achieving the edit that we want without having to get too complicated and carried away. And I'm just about done. Which is great. That looks pretty cool. So if I just zoom back out to fit in window view, there we go. We've gotten rid of all of that awfulness um, on the floor and up around the sides of the model, and we've managed to create an image that looks like that. We've created a bit of space around the model as well, which is great. Um, but we're actually going to accentuate that even more by using the crop tool. A lot of people use the crop tool to reduce the size of an image. We're going to use it to make it larger, making sure that our background swatch is still set to white. Um, what we're going to do, and I'm just going to actually zoom back out a couple more steps as well. I'm going to hold down shift and tab just to hide these panels over here. Okay, so we're going to select the crop tool. Now the ratio or format that you use is pretty much up to you. These are a few presets that I've put in myself. I think Photoshop comes default with these five at the top here. I'm um, just going to use a 6x4. Make sure that when you select the crop tool, make sure that the resolution is empty though, because we don't want to resample the image when we resize it. We just want to resize it. So make sure that's important. Make sure that's empty. And I'm going to use a landscape format here, so I'm going to uh, hit these two little arrows here so I can have the width as 6 inches and the height as 4 inches. Now what I'm going to do is um, work from this corner. I'm going to click and drag up over the image. Now when we get to the other side, Photoshop won't let you go any further. It just stops there. Um, but we want to keep going. So I'm going to go back over this point, um, hold down the mouse again, click in and keep dragging until we get to about... Oh, about there I'll do. I'm going to then click and drag in and bring the screen back so that the model's right on the thirds, about there and just double click, we'll hit return and there we go, we've increased the size of the image making it look like our model's standing on quite a big elaborate set when really she was just standing in quite a small studio so there we have it ladies and gentlemen I'm just going to bring back in this panel here and resize it to fit in view so we've basically, to show you a before and after gone from our basic start image here and made it look quite cool. Once you get the hang of this edit, you really can do what I've just shown you. You really can do it in just a couple of minutes. In fact, I've just noticed a little bit more up here. So I'm going to brush that out and get rid of that. And we're done. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed that video. Um, if there's anything else that you want us to show, any hints or tips or anything that you would like to see done, um, please send me an email through our website here at timography.net. Otherwise, we'll catch you later. Bye for now.